Hi everybody, welcome to the D.N. Scanlon Show. I'm D.J. Foster, joined by Grand Valley State Head Volleyball Coach, D.N. Scanlon. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Hi, D.J. We have a good uh, a good result to talk about from last night, but mm -hmm. we'll go with the weekend first. Uh, you were at home this weekend at Northern Michigan and Michigan Tech. Uh, you dropped a tough five-setter to Northern Michigan yeah. on Friday. You won the second and third sets. It got into the fifth set. And Northern Michigan was able to prevail 15-11. Uh, obviously a tough, uh, a tough loss to swallow at home against the Wildcats. Uh, some good performances from Megan Schroeder. She had 20 kills and hit 317 overall, mm -hmm. one of her best matches uh, in the Laker uniform. And then Abby Aiken had 16 kills and hit 308 from the outside hitter position. Very good numbers for, for both those girls, but again, a tough loss uh, in five sets to a, a good Northern Michigan team. Yeah, they came in with, you know, knowing that um, a win over us would, would really boost where they were at in the conference and also, um, you know, any shot that they might have at postseason play. And as you mentioned, Megan Schroeder really kind of put us on her back for the first four sets. Um, she was unstoppable. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, they started to make adjustments to, to put more attention on her. We were just looking for um, a, a one more person to kind of step up. And, and uh, when you look at our stats through the year, when we have that third person, mm -hmm. is, we're almost unstoppable. But when it's two, it's it, it's kind of really hard. Like you said, Abby Aiken had a good night as well. Um, after you know, she battled a week full of the flu and being sick, and really didn't even practice. And for her to come out and, and um, really have a gutsy, gutsy performance on Friday night when she was still really pretty sick, we just needed one more person to kind of step up and. Disappointing to lose on our home court. Um, that's the only time we'll see Northern Michigan this year with a new conference schedule, so mm -hmm. we don't get that uh, second time around to kind of get them back. But um, you know, I, I, I thought we responded well uh, come, coming out on Saturday. Again, a, a match we, um, you know, statistically probably should, you know, we should win that match against Michigan Tech. But I thought we didn't play down to their level. You know, we handled them pretty well. And then the follow-up match on Tuesday, you couldn't right. ask for anything better. Yeah, let's talk about the Michigan Tech match real quick. A 3 nothing sweep mm -hmm. over the Huskies, as you said. Probably on paper, a game you should have won, and you went out, and that's what you did. You took care of business. Betsy Ronda played very well, 14 mm -hmm. kills, 8 digs. She hit 375. Uh, and then Ina, uh, Ina Uma had a, had a good match with 10 kills and 6 blocks. Your 12th sweep of the year, so it was good to probably get back out on the court and take out some frustration on Michigan Right, Tech. and we set two of our starters. We allowed them a little rest time. You know, it's that time of the year where, you know, just um, trying to, to, to manage your personnel and make sure we're all fresh and ready to go. So Abby Aikens set out that match, mm -hmm. the, both Abbies, <laughs> and Abby uh, Ebels as well. And so it gave some playing time to Ali Simmons started and played the whole match. And then we used several different people on the on the left side position. But, but you know, we told them it, it was, it's no excuse. I don't want to expect us to go out with two starters on the bench and have our level of play. I know what they can do, what we do in practice. I know how these kids perform in practice. So, you know, our level of, of um, uh, play was, you know, our expectations was still up there. And, uh, yeah, to have Betsy come back and kind of have that rebound match because she didn't have a great offensive match against Northern Michigan on uh, Friday night. So I thought that was important for her to come and do that before we headed into Tuesday's match to kind of have that confidence come going into the Ferris match. Uh, and Coach, obviously we're taping this on Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. so we get to talk about a fun result from Tuesday night. You went over to Ferris uh, last night in a, a team that you had lost to earlier in the season on your home court in five sets. It's always competitive with them, uh, but you went over there and pretty much dominated 3-0, mm -hmm. uh, a sweep of Ferris. They were 12-1 and coming into the match in conference play. Uh, you had 53 kills in three sets. They had 27, which is pretty hard to do to double up a team in just three sets. You had 93 digs. That's your most of any match this season. Abby Aiken had 15 kills. Betsy Ronda had 14 kills and a match high 21 digs. Megan Schroeder had 11 kills. That's tough to do to get that many girls yes. in double figures and kills in only three sets, but one of the best matches you played all year. Yeah, and in a lot of different ways. Like I said, have, uh, midweek matches are tough, just period, no mm -hmm. matter even if you're playing them at home, especially if you're playing them on the road. Um, and late in the season, mid midweek matches you know, are, are extremely tough, too. Playing in, at Ferris, it's probably the toughest gym to play in in the whole conference. Um, we have a lot of young kids that hadn't even walked, stepped into there before. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think we did a really good job preparing the kids for that, or they they did a good job, I guess, in preparation themselves mentally of what they needed to do. We talked a lot about it after after our Michigan Tech match, and as you said, to have 
Um, those kind of numbers, you know, offensively talking about that, I thought our setter, Claire Ruinkamp, did a great job of distributing the ball. You look at the numbers and they were pretty even across the board. Um, and that, that uh, it's hard to defend against mm -hmm. when, when you know that, okay, she's not constantly going to this person. Um, and then defensively, we were just exceptional. And, uh, it, you know, Ferris is a, one of the strongest offensive teams in the, in the conference. And we were just dialed in um, all in the back row. Uh, we touched a lot. We didn't have a lot of stuff blocks, but we touched a lot of balls at the net that just slowed them down, mm -hmm. kind of frustrated them. And um, uh, our kids played with, I don't know, we, an air of confidence uh, and uh, enthusiasm. And it was just a fun match to be a part of. Uh, I think we kind of quieted the crowd a little bit. And to do it in three, I think, was, was a statement win. Yeah, definitely a statement victory for you there. Mm -hmm. Since the loss to Ferris in late September, you're 11-1. and one. Mm -hmm. Nine of those 11 victories are 3-0 victories. You certainly have got on quite a roll recently, mm -hmm. uh, and you're playing your, probably your best uh, ball of the year right now. Yeah, and that's what we want to do heading into November. It's hard to believe that's almost here. Sure. We just have two weeks left. Um, you know, of our, our conference schedule and, and then the conference tournament. So I think we're progressing, um, you know, uh, in the right direction. Uh, you know, the one blip there is that Northern Michigan, but you'd rather have that loss now versus two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. So I think our kids did the right thing, responded from that. That's all that you can hope for when something like that happens. Um, but feel good, but I still, like I said, we can still continue to get better, and I feel that these girls understand that they want to be coached they want to be led and and are very open to what we bring to practice on a daily basis yeah. your last regular season road trip this weekend mm -hmm. you're at saginaw uh, on friday night at seven o'clock and then you go up to lake superior state saturday at 2 p.m talk about what you're going to face with both of those teams obviously the saginaw valley state matches is, is kind of a rival match as well right there's a physical component to it we had a midweek match and now we got to get on the road um, these are two must-have wins. We cannot drop either one of these these matches. There's a, if you look at the GLIAC standings, it's just a muddle in the middle right now. And um, uh, you know, one one loss, one way or the other, can put you from third in the conference to maybe not even making the conference tournament. It's just so jammed in there. So, um, and and I think we're going to talk about you know Saginaw ended our season last year. We lost in the um, uh, quarterfinals of the conference tournament to Saginaw. So. Um, I still think about that, <laughs> and I, if they don't, I'm going to remind them about it. And and um, you know, uh, I think going there, you know, with that purpose of again, let's get a, you know, maybe Saginaw's not having the best year, but let's let's um, a little bit of redemption from last sure. year. You've uh, you've been on quite a streak these last 12 mm -hmm. matches and a great one last night against Fair State. Yeah. Let's keep it going this weekend on your last road trip of the regular season. All right, sounds like a plan. Thanks for watching the Deanne Scanlon Show here on the Grand Valley Sports Network.